Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to this online webinar about C-Engineer, C-Engineer 19.1 I'm going to use and I will be talking about scaffolding design and C-Engineer according to the specific code 12811. My name is Dominic and I work as a team leader on the customer service or customer support department in uh, the Belgium office. So first, uh, to start with, first of all, some few explanations about the GoToWebinar tool itself. So your audio as a participant will be muted, so uh, you cannot speak to me directly. But if you would have any questions during or after the webinar, please don't hesitate to insert them in the question box. At the end of the webinar, I will try to respond to all questions if possible. But I see there are a lot of attendees today, so there is a chance or possibility that I may list all questions up and send them afterwards by email to you all. And of course, this session is being recorded as always, so you can always review it afterwards or from directly from our SIA uh, website, SIA.net, uh, or on our SIA YouTube channel, of course. So the agenda of today, uh, of course, talking about scaffolding specific in C Engineer, like uh, to start with, how can you model a scaffold in our software? There are multiple possibilities, of course. Then really specific are the nonlinear connections or the nonlinear hinges between all the elements. So we call it the scaffolding couplers. Next, really important as well is like how do you now run the correct analysis on a scaffold, uh, on a scaffolding structure? And then we're going to have a look on all the verifications, on the checks, uh, ULS, SLS, coupler checks, and so on. This is the scaffold that we are going to talk about today. Uh, it's a simple one, but we can use that really as a good example to explain the principles and what is developed within the C Engineer software. To start with uh, the modeling of a scaffold, of course. Eh? So yeah, um, those who know CI already, yeah, you can model it element by element. I mean, columns, beams, and so on. To assist you, you can maybe use like a 2D line grid uh, or a 3D line grid. And of course, scaffolding means also a lot of parts that are repeti uh, repetition. So. Uh, if you have modeled a specific part, you can always copy or multi-copy it to have a fast modeling of your complete structure. Another thing that is interesting is yeah, you can model user blocks. Uh, uh, for instance, the lattice beam. Uh, this is a good example. You model it once and you can reuse it in all your other projects. You can also use table inputs uh, for your nodes and your beams and so on uh, using an Excel sheet. And of course, last but not least, is import possibilities. Um, mostly used here, let's say in the Benelux, is the DWG or the EXF import can be as well 2D and 3D. You can also use IFC, but that's, to be honest, is not the best way because IFC is like a CAT modeling way. So you still need to align all the elements, connect them all together using the BIM toolbox. It's a possibility, but it's it's like a workaround. And also you can use a Revit and Tecla uh, structures. Why are these two specific mentions here? Because Revit and Tecla has the possibility to generate an analytical model. We are, of course, a finite element analytical software C engineer, so then you don't have the need to uh, additionally align and connect all the elements. So start with the default modeling tools in CIA. Um, yeah, you can just create your cross sections. I Here's a sprint screen of what I did. I created the same cross section, but we use it for the standard lecture, guardrail, and so on, just to be able to have a simple selection, uh, coloring, and uh, selection for results, and so on. So then you can use a two or a 3D line grid uh, um, to assist you to have these pick points in the software. If you look at the dimensions, uh, you see that I used layer as an example here, the layer scaffolding. And as mentioned before, yeah, once you have a part of your structure, you can easily copy or use a multi-copy. 
User blocks, for those who don't know this, this is really interesting. Once you have created or modeled a really small part, let's say a lattice beam as an example, you can save it on this specific location. Uh, the part is editable. Eh? So here, when you go to setup options and directories, go to the user block libraries. If I now save a simple structure which I have modeled on this specific location. So that means that from that moment on, I can in any project within C Engineer, no matter which type, Type of project, I can insert it in the structure menu, a menu as a direct, uh, direct a user block. So that's really interesting. And this is an example, of course, here like a lattice beam that can then be reused. Table input. Um, this is also really interesting in the software. Uh, you can open it via, of course, the view parameters there that you can go to view toolbars and then take on the table input option. And here on the right side, you see a print screen again, like how it looks like. It is not grayed out, it is editable. So even in CI itself, you can, you can change the coordinates of the nodes or the beams or no matter what to support the loadings, whatever you want to change, you can do it directly here in the table uh, in, in CI. But of course, you can also do it in Excel, copy paste into SIA or uh, multiple possibilities here. Huh? You can also use simple formulas to do recalculation and so on. Import from CATS uh, software, I mean, uh, yeah, drawing tools. Like mentioned before, uh, we notice here that a lot of DWG is used, huh? so AutoCAD files. I'm also going to show it to you. So, and when you do so, you have the possibility to insert that as being lines, which you can then use to, to quickly draw uh, beams on it, or you can directly do it as beams or 2D members or solids or, or whatever. Really important remark is that you make sure in your AutoCAD drawing, if you want to use it, that you have the excess lines of your beams uh, drawn there. That is actually the, the layer that you want to import. You don't have anything, uh, uh, using the volumes or the rendering, that is no benefit at all. You really need the calculation lines, the access lines. That's a really important one. And uh, again, multiple other possibilities, XML, Revit, Tecla, uh, IFC, uh, Step Steel, a lot of possibilities to import. Also, of course, to export. Huh? Uh, so not only on the import side, but it works in both directions. So. That was the first chapter, I suppose, to propose and now go directly into the CS software, which you see here. Uh, it's an empty file. I haven't modeled anything yet. What I've done so far is create some beams, uh, beam elements. So what you see here, the same tube, but we use it sometimes. And also you see here, these kind of beams I've created. These are, let's say the floorboards for which I've created an additional material so that we can also model it directly into the software. Um, Let's start with a line grid. You can use a 2D or a 3D line grid, a rectangular one, for example, here. And then you can easily say, like, if I use, let's say, the scaffolding layer elements, eh, you can easily say here, what is it, 2.07 one time, for example, 2.57 again, two times. And then let's say in the Y direction, 109, like this. Once you've created it, you can easily, I'll pick on this one, you can easily put it somewhere in your structure, or you can also say, no, I want to use a 3D line grid, also possible. I will quickly do something like, okay, I have five times here, 1.09, for example, three times, and let's say a height of two meters as well, three times, so that you can easily insert it in your C Engineer file. These elements keep editable. You can have multiple in your structure. You can easily, with this button, activate or deactivate what you want to see uh, at that moment. So I just take it off. It's no longer visible, but it's still in the file. And of course, that now you can use to easily model. If I go to my pick points, uh, I can now say I don't want to use my dot grid, so every meter, but maybe only my line grid possibilities. And then you can easily go to structure and use the modeling tools, huh? like, okay, I have a column, height is, select here the correct element, standard, and two meters height, for example, and you can see that now I easily have this big points here coming up, so that you cannot misclick on the dots, I don't think it's clearly as visible, but you see the small dot grid, 
in the background so uh, that you can easily start modeling these things. Huh? So that's of course one thing uh, how to do so. I mentioned about table input, so I will go also to show that by view, and then you have here the toolbars, and then you have the table input. You see here now, these are the nodes that I have um, in my specific file. Of course, I can add one. It's really easy. I say N15, I want it on position 10, maybe a uh, Y direction, but also do 10 to make it separately, and six meters of height. Now this node is added here. This is the one, so you can easily add your notes yourself, or you can also like yeah change everything. If I say I want to change all my notes and I want to display the Z coordinate by plus ten, for example, you just click on that one and you see that you can easily move it. This works as well in C Engineer itself, but also in Excel. If you now do some adaptions in Excel, you just can copy paste it into the software. Okay. Next one, uh, with the drawing tools, modeling drawing, we have here an import TWG. So let me open this, is this a correct one? Yes, scaffolding design. You see that it contains more than 2,000 entities. So by default, that means that in this window, everything will be ticked off. So I will say I want to show my lines of this particular layer, rotate, uh, also this one's. Maybe enlarge it. And now you can choose. I mean, uh, I will take a part out of it so that I can show it to you. Imagine I will select this part. This is now being selected as being lines. Uh, so if I then say import selected, easily I can place it wherever I want to have it. And these are now lines. So no, no beams, no calculation uh, tools. But then if you go to member and you choose what you want to have, for example, I want to have a guardrail. Then you have this simple option here to say, I want to select lines. And you can easily say, okay, those, for example, here, those should be my guardrails. And you see that you can easily change or use the line to, to insert a cross section over there. The other possibility, I go back to the same DWG file. Again, the same warning message, of course. Take on what I want to see. And I will select, for example, here the option beams. And you can now select what you want. Or you can do all and adapt the, the beams afterwards. Huh? Or you can say, maybe I'll show it like this. I also want to take this part. Then you say import selected. And now he's asking you, because you have selected the import as being a beam, okay, which type of cross section do you want to assign to it? So you can quickly do this. Maybe what I can also do to make it more visible is change my coloring so that I want to use a color by cross section like this. And now you can easily say, okay, this should be, for example, this one, this one, and this one. Shouldn't be a standard, but it should be a bracing. And now you see it's a different color as well. And for example, these beams here below, where yeah, these shouldn't be standards, but PhD should be ledgers and so on, so you can easily change that part. So this is actually how you can create a complete model in the software uh, and how you then can adapt it. It's easy modeling. Also for the bracing, uh, these are by default connected in the lines, uh, in the calculation lines, but then you can easily say, no, I want to have an eccentricity. And this is also, of course, taking into account the analysis as well. This is an eccentricity not only for the drawing, but really for the analysis. So that, that is taken into account when you can when you go and calculate the structure. Okay, go back to the PowerPoint presentation. Because now we come to the couplers, eh? how to connect now the beams and standards and so on. So we have two types of manufacturer couplers, we name it in the software, that's couplock and liar. That's so far. Of course, you can create your own type of couplers by creating nonlinear functions. Um, really interesting here because, yeah, normally you have some sort of Zulasum, it's the most famous, where you have a nonlinear function described, for example, your MV diagram, moments rotation diagram. Then there comes a simple formula with it. You can do it in Excel. 
and then you know or you can create some notes or some lines to describe this specific function that you can also do in an excel sheet that we've created in the CI garage I will directly show it to you that makes it really simple and of course uh, we have now Kuplop and Liar available but this is an important note always possible to request an expansion so if you use something else than those two um, we can always talk to each other I mean our development team with you to request to add it to the library that means that you can really easily select it and don't need to insert it yourself right that's the thing and um, why is this mentioned here resistance values for checking the coupler yeah, there are two ways of inserting it. It's or it's just uh, a hinge on the beam, default hinge on the beam, which is the same nonlinear functions and so on. Or you do it coming from the library, so you add it to the library. And what's the big difference is that if you add it to the library, it will be checked in the coupler check. If you just insert it as a hinge on the beam, it will not be checked. It's just a nonlinear parameter that is taken into account in the calculation. Of course, possibility to do nonlinear supports and also nonlinear parameters on the beams. That's also important. So let's start with the manufacturer couplers. As mentioned, we have Cuplock and we have Liar, the three variations, eh? K2000 plus 2 and HS are implemented in the software really simple you select one of these if you want to use it and automatically all nonlinear functions are assigned to it to take into account correct stiffness for the analysis these are the customized couplers eh? by default we have implemented some of course all editable if you want which you see here and this is what I said if you do it in the hinge type library then you also can insert like characteristic resistance values we call it and this means that it is sent to the coupler checks in the steel menu to do a verification if we don't do it like this and you just do a hinge on the beam then you don't have this possibility and there is no verification at the end so here you see like a nonlinear function you can adapt and you can change them the nonlinear supports, um, for example, scaffold is really important. It's friction support, so that you can also take into account. I will show it all uh, directly in C itself. And nonlinear parameters on the beams. For example, for the bracings, what I will do is I will insert a gap of one millimeter so that it can, in longitudinal direction of, of the longitudinal direction of the bracing itself, it can deform, uh, elongate, or let's say one millimeter before it will take uh, stresses, before it will take forces. Uh, and you see here a lot of possibilities. You can say that an element's only working on pressure, on tension, limit force, so that it can take, for example, 10, 10 kN of compression and then it will uh, fail uh, the gap. But also cables and initial stresses are uh, possible. So initial stress, yeah, you can call it the pre-stress possibility. Yeah? But also cables are possible to analyze. It's all non-linear parameters, so of course needed to do a non-linear analysis. Go back to the software. Um, so let's talk about first hinges. Um, I will start with the bracing. So what we have here is uh, with in model data you have possibility to insert the hinge on a beam. And this is a default one. So if I now say I want to have a free rotation, you see here this is also the direction of that rotation and you can choose whether you want to have on begin or end of the beam or the bracing or on both. So this is just a default hinge. I'm going on on the bracing and I'm also going to add a beam nonlinearity and change this parameter to gap. For example, it works in both directions, tension and compression, and I will say it's one millimeter displacement. And it doesn't matter if I place it on the beginning or the end of the element, huh? it can displace one millimeter before it can take some force. You also see it clearly, I think, in this sign or in this uh, label here, what it will stand for if you change it. And I will say, no, I want to have pressure only. Yeah, you see the things coming up. So really easy, adaptable, also once inserted. So that is one thing. Uh, second thing is, of course, I'm going back to beam linearity, for example, to connect my ledgers here. Let's take those two out of it. And I'm going back to hinge on the beam, and I will change this thing into library. And library means that by default, CI engineer here is opening the first thing that pops up coming from the library. So let's change that one. Like this, okay. And I will say, no, I don't want to use, uh, let's say, customize. I will go to use a liar. 
HS, for example, you see directly all nonlinear functions are, are adapted to it. For example, the rotation about the, the local Y axis, this MV diagram pops up here, the resistance values pops up, so everything is taken into account. Really important remark as well, steel and aluminium are possible. So also the checks at the end, so it's for steel and aluminium, all is possible. If you click on OK, so maybe I should have also changed the name, huh? uh, Liar HS, let's call it like this. What's now the difference is, first of all, you see this, this two squares here coming up on top. This means that it's really something from the library. And at the end, this connection will be checked because we have here, of course, resistance values to take into account. So as well, the six forces as well, the interaction formula will be verified. Then let's go to supports. Uh, we'll say I put it on this node. I can easily say node and support. You can use a default kind of thing. So let's say I want to make it hinged, for example, and change here the parameters. Eh? So in the Z direction, I want it only to work on pressure. And you can choose rigid press only or flexible press only. Then you insert the flexibility eh? or a stiffness value. And the next step, you can also say friction. So that's the, the, the resistance in X direction, of course, is dependent on the reaction force that is working on that direction. So then here insert some coefficients. I will do the same for the Y direction, depending on the Z reaction force and do something like this. And then you see things coming up. So you see here, this is a sign that it works only in compression. You can easily change it if I say uh, intention, you will see that it changed the direction. Eh? So simple as that. And these things mean that there is uh, friction coming up. So that is also all taken into account. This is how you can insert your modeling parts with eccentricities, with nonlinear parameters and so on. So let's now cheat and go to the complete model. So what I've done here is you see the scaffold has been modeled with nonlinear friction supports huh? uh, with all these, I will take the option on, with all these nonlinear hinges coming from the library as well. And last thing to mention about the modeling, of course, yeah, also modeled these kinds of beams. Let me take one part out of it. So with the floorboards like this. Yeah, so rectangular section so that I was easily or possibly uh, could insert the loading on it. But also this means that the horizontal stiffness is taken into account. So I've created some load cases. Uh, let's say the self weight, of course, you won't see anything. Let's go to the next one. These are the um, self weights of the top boards. Huh? So on the side, then the surface loads really on top. Why? Because this is the most severe or the most dangerous floor to load huh? for the uh, overturning moment of the scaffold and some wind forces. And these all are combined in linear combinations in nonlinear combinations and as well in stability combinations. So now we'll come up to that um, directly first in our PowerPoint presentation. So calculation methods in the software. Uh, so um, always possible to do, of course, a linear analysis. Why do I mention here is the first stability check? Because we often see at our support department that many users model not only for scaffolds, but for everything, bridges, apartment blocks, the complete structure with all the loadings on it, do the nonlinear analysis, and then come to the step that the structure is unstable. And sometimes it's just a small modeling mistake. So always advisable to run first a, a linear analysis, maybe also only for the self way and then uh, you can quickly check if there is no instabilities already on that point and then continue with, with the advanced analysis. Really important, of course, a second order perfection with imperfections is mandatory. So in the scaffolding code, it's really clearly identified. I will also show it in the steel check later on. 
And then the next step is stability or slash, yeah, we can also call it a buckling analysis. This stability analysis within the software will calculate your alpha critical value, which is clearly indicated here on the print screen. Uh, this is coming from the Eurocode, which for non-scaffolding structures can be important to decide whether you do a second order or first order analysis. But of course, scaffolding is always second order, but really important, it gives you the buckling shape of your 3D structure. And then to go on to the real second order analysis, you can do that with imperfections, uh, with global frame imperfections, as well local uh, bow imperfections on the elements. But those two can be replaced by the buckling shape as an imperfection, and this can be really important. So when you have, for example, a scaffold with, with a lot of openings in it, because, uh, I don't know, there is a garage port or so on, so where the scaffold is interrupted, then sometimes the buckling shape will go over multiple standards on. And then, of course, you have a bigger imperfection than when you use a local bar imperfection. So this is always advisable to use that one. Again, I will show it later on. And of course, we do a geometrical nonlinear analysis. Why? Because this respects the condition of the equilibrium of a deformed structure. So the structure is deformed, and then it will again iteratively do the analysis. So let's first talk about stability analysis. So when you create stability combinations, you can do random stability analysis, and this is the result that comes out of it. I have asked in this particular specific project to calculate for every stability combination, which is ULS combination, of course, two critical modes or two buckling modes. Um, and this is the alpha critical values that comes with it. Then you can ask to show you, okay, this critical buckling shape, show me how the structure will buckle. And now you see here a nice S shape coming up of, for example, this standard. Logically, this is the one because all the loading is also as well coming from the racings over there. And then you can do a second order analysis. Yeah, so with the default global frame imperfections coming from the Eurocode itself, with the bow imperfections according to this, the, uh, the buckling curves, or again, you can use that buckling shape coming from the stability analysis, analysis to do second order analysis. And the next step, um, here you see a really nice image which describes you the difference between first, second, and we call it third order analysis. First order analysis is what you do with a linear calculation. Yeah, it's just the moment is just your horizontal force multiplied by the distance x. If you go to second order analysis, taking into account imperfections, then of course you have an additional factor coming up, which is f multiplied by the distance y, of course. But if you take on the geometrical nonlinear functionality, then you do a geometrical nonlinear analysis, and that's what was mentioned in the previous slide. Then we take into account also, or we calculate the equilibrium of a deformed structure. And then also this deformed structure, this W that comes up here is taken into account in your real moment calculation. So that's a really important remark. You can choose that in the in the solver setting. So when you go to, to start the analysis, you can easily here choose it to a second or third order analysis. And we continue this calculation it iteratively uh, done until, of course, an equilibrium reach. So here you see the formula that is used to for the solver to decide, okay, I may stop the analysis because uh, I have finished the equilibrium or I should continue. Let's go to the software then. Um, I will do it as well in this file. So I've created some combinations, uh, linear combinations, as well ULS as SLS. So let's say this is our first order analysis. Then the ULS combinations, I've copied them to stability combinations. Um, so let's talk about that one first. Of course, if I click on analysis, you can do a linear, nonlinear, and a stability analysis here. And the results of the stability analysis is here to, in the results service. So critical load coefficients, it will show you directly like, okay, these are just my alpha critical values. And then within 3D displacement, you can ask for the displaced uh, or show the buckling shape. I will tick on wireframe to gain speed. Why? Because it's a 3D displacement option. Uh, that means that on every fiber of every section of every beam, he will print out the results, which can, of course, take some time. And now we can, we can also enlarge it. Eh? Then you see how your structure will buckle. Uh, so, for example, here you can literally see this S shape coming up here in this standard. So, 
really interesting to see and then you can also continue like go to the fort uh, see again here uh, so this is really interesting so that's the stability analysis then we go to nonlinear so let's go talk to the go to the nonlinear analysis as well eh? so I created some nonlinear combinations here what I've done here is we have, uh, let's say, in global imperfection, let's start with that one, we have multiple possibilities. Simple inclination means that you will insert yourself, I will show it to you, just a deformation in millimeter per meter of height, so that the software will ask you, okay, insert me, for example, the global deformation. You can go to the code parameters, and this means that you do an inclination function as before. You can use deformation from the load case, so that you insert, let's say, a fictive permanent load case only to be used to calculate the deformation, and that deformation is used as a start of a non analysis. Or you can use the buckling shape. Remember the S shape that we had here calculated? If you use the buckling shape, you can clearly say, okay, I want to use A shape number one and insert the deformation that comes with it. Let's go to the inclination functions uh, described in the codes. So with structure analysis, I have your initial deformation. First of all, I've created this one. Uh, so this is the formula like, okay, uh, what is the basic value one divided by 200, multiplied by alpha H, multiplied by alpha M. And of course, this is, I will go back to my PowerPoint, uh, where is it described here? This is an inclination like this. But in my scaffold, I have some anchorage points, which you see coming up here. So the scaffold is not a freestanding one, so it cannot have an inclination like this, but it has to be in a shape. So if you want to use this particular inclination function, you can also insert a factor, it's called, which described this as kind of shape in your nonlinear combination. So I go back, inclination functions. I will put it in the x direction because in this particular nonlinear combination, I also have uh, my wind load in the x direction implemented. So I think that's the most logic and most severe one. Okay, and then you can go to choose your function you have created here and then say, okay, I want to have my factor as an S shape, yes or no. Let's go to the Bowen perfections. Um, these are the f first four are ULS combinations. Two possible options, or you say according to buckling data. Buckling data means I select an element and we all have here our buckling data that comes up. But to be honest, scaffolds are tubes. Buckling curve C, so it means uh, length divided by 200 that you should insert. So that's what I mean here, huh? the buckling curve. You can insert one of these tables. But again, uh, we are calculating all the tubes, so it's all 1 divided by 200 or length divided by 200. So you can really easily say, I want to do a simple curvature here so that you manually insert it and the default value is as well 1 divided by 200. So that's the most simple way. Once that is all done, of course, uh, I see that my results for the nonlinear calculation are erased because I've changed my combination, so I will quickly launch the analysis. You see this Langsos method, it was really fast coming up. Now we see doing this the, the um, stability analysis using the Langsos method, uh, Langsos theory behind it. And when that is finished, he can launch the nonlinear analysis. In the meantime, I will go on with here the specific checks to be able to show. So that's what you see now is my nonlinear analysis that is running for eight nonlinear combinations. You see like some kind of staircase coming up in those diagram. That's because I choose for the newton robson method with five increments, meaning five steps to insert the load, 20%, 40, 60, 80, 100, and so on, to be able to use or to calculate equilibrium on the deformed structure. That's really important. Okay, calculation is done, great. So let's talk about the 
interesting part as well is the checks according to the 12811. So, really simple, if you do a scaffolding project, you have ticked on the functionality scaffolding, by default, this option in the steel setup, or, as well in the aluminium, it's also possible, is ticked on. This means that every CHS section or the medical section is automatically checked according to the Eurocode 12811. Everything else, imagine that you also have an, an HEB or an HEA section or an IPE, no matter what, a default steel section in your project that will be checked according to Eurocode 3 or Eurocode 9, depending on what the material you are using. This is a scaffolding check itself. To be honest, it's just a simplified uh, thing. Uh, if you look at Eurocode 3 check, complete check, the scaffolding check is a simplified way of doing so. Why? Because we only have like stress checks or section checks. There is no stability check in scaffolds. Why not? There is no buckling taken into account or has it has to be checked because you're doing a second order analysis with all included imperfection. Lateral torsional buckling is non-existing for tubes and so on. So that's the reason why it's just a section check. And of course, we calculate an equivalent moment, my square plus mz square, the same for shear force. And then we calculate the internal force itself, but as well interaction formulas taken into account. The results you can of course ask as a graphical output, as a table output which looks like this, so that you see the, the resistance values calculated, normal force, shear force and uh, moment, and then the three unity checks coming up here, plus interaction, but from C Engineer 19 on, on request of our scaffolding users as well, then you have to, um, or you can uh, be able to print as well the formulas coming up here. So you have a really detailed calculation, how the software is calculating it, printed out in the software, so that you can just follow what is happening in the background, and also uh, create a nice calculation note to show to your customers. Okay, so uh, then the couplers checks. This one is coming for cup lock. Huh? Uh, of course, the six uh, forces are checked, but then we have two interaction formulas. We have the same for the liar cup locks as well implemented, huh? so that the interaction formulas are taken into account. And also, let's say the customized uh, couplers, there also have some interaction formulas implemented. Same as with the steel beams uh, scaffolding check, we have a graphical output. Until today, we have a table output, which is a brief one, uh, which looks like this, or so the six internal forces plus the interaction formula is calculated. And now, small surprise, a sneak preview. Currently, we are developing everything with formulas. So, starting from C Engineer 20 on, and this is a request we receive a lot from our scaffolding users, we will have a detailed output for the coupler checks. So that all internal forces are printed out. You remember the brief output was just a unity check at the end. Here you see all internal forces, the characteristic values, the resistance values are printed out, and also all verifications with a reference to the formulas in the code are printed out in detail. And this is really interesting, especially for the interaction checks, so that you can really see what the software is doing in the background. It's no, no um, black box anymore. You can really see what is happening there. Then we go to the last uh, thing, is the SLS check, of course, the deflection check, also newly developed, I mean, adapted since the engineer 19. Now we have the possibility to do uh, in-plane and out-of-plane deflection limits to insert it, and the engineer will take it into account for your total loads and your variable loads. So automatically in the background, he will create, let's say, additional combinations to take that into account and then show you as well the limits, the, the, the maximum deformation, huh, relative deformation, the one for the variable loads only, so the variable one, and also, of course, the limit for the maximum and the variable one, and show you the things. Possible to do or to take into account, but that's not 100% uh, relative, I think, for scaffolding, is also you can insert or design a camber so that the software will take a camber into account. Let's go back to SIA talk about the steel menu now. So, 
we have here two options for the ULS check. ULS check itself, and I will quickly show you the result for my linear analysis. And so it's generating for 366 elements, generating the results. There it is. This is the graphical output. You see a lot of remarks coming up, this W1. And if I show it to you, clearly indicates as specified in a specific code. It is assumed that you do a second order analysis, including imperfections, as well in the output. The same remark is printed out to remind you, you have to do a second order analysis for scaffolding. So this is the warning that comes up. So let's go to my nonlinear class, including all nonlinear ULS combinations. Okay, refresh it. These are given for 366 beams doing the analysis or doing the verification in the background now. There it is. And then you can easily ask for the preview and check all the results. If we go to the scaffolding coupler check, this is the one as it is developed today in the current version of C-Engineer 19.1. So graphically you have unity check coming up and again in the preview window you will have like the, the, the brief output. Um, for me, because I'm one using an internal version and also a development functionalities, so I can also now show you this one. You will not see it today in your version, but then you know it will come up in the next one. So that I will do it for all my elements. I will do it for my nonlinear class again. Where is this one? This one. And I want, you can choose again, brief or detailed output. So let's do this and show you the difference. Brief output is just showing you like really briefly all the unity checks, similar as what we have today, but in the future then you can also ask for the detailed one. Coming with more information, with the internal forces, the resistance values, and really interesting, all the formulas again printed out with a reference to the code. As a last check in that case, in the steel setup, you can insert the SLS deflection check, whether you want to design a camber, yes or no, whether you want to take into account different um, limits for the total and variable loads. And then really easily, of course, now I take my non the class SLS to ask for the checks for my nonlinear SLS combination coming up. And you can also ask for like, um, the deformations itself, the relative deformations. So let's briefly show it like this. You see then the maximum values, the variable deflections, the limit values, and the interaction, or sorry, the, the verification. Here you can choose what you want to see. Eh? Overall unity check or no, I want to see the deformation in UZ, and then you can also ask for these separately. So show me the UZ max, for example, or the UZ variable, or the limit value, or whatever you want to see. You can choose here the option you, you want to print out. Okay, that was this everything that is possible with, with scaffolding in the C-Engineer software. Again, uh, I model the simple structure, but you can elaborate it. You're completely free because we don't use uh, anything else. Maybe one thing that I forgot to show you, and because that's important, I think, is uh, the user blocks in the structure service. So imagine you save this file as a user block, then you can easily, with advanced input, go to your user blocks. Let's say I take this one here out of it, uh, let us be easily inserted. He will ask you some questions about what you want to do with layers and cross sections and not only the function, you want to add them to the library, yes or no, and then you can easily place it where you want to have it, for example. And we use it thus in every other projects, no matter what, so you can create your own kind of library. Uh, that's really interesting. Okay, this was the end of what I wanted to show you. Thanks a lot for attending this presentation or this online webinar. As stated before, it will be it is recorded, so it will be placed on YouTube channel. So again, thank you very much. And if you would have any questions, please don't hesitate to insert them in the question box. Thanks for your attention.